I am so excited for today's video. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be testing out the Utopian Dream palette from Pat McGrath. Also playing with this artistry wand right here. So if you want to see my thoughts and experience, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I'm a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. <sighs> I have a specialty in Pat McGrath on my channel, okay? So I have all of her palettes. I'm a collector. I am a fan of her work as well, of course. Yeah, I will be honest. I have not done my due diligence for this review. I have been out of town and this has been sitting at my house since Saturday. So I just, I woke up this morning, I got ready for this video because I just need to throw it on my eyes. So yeah, that's just, that's just what we're gonna do. We're just gonna play. I'm sorry, like I said, I didn't do intensive research like I normally do. I'm not doing comparisons in today's video because this has been sitting in my house for five days and I just need to play and we're catching it on camera. So let's go over it. I did order this from the Pat McGrath website. If you do order any items from the website, use the code DREAM10. It will save you 10% off it's not an affiliate code that's like the the code for the website and yeah utopian dream let's take a look at it this is what the packaging looks like this time it is 125 dollars. absolutely beautiful i love kind of the pastel watercolor vibes that we have going on here this has a 18 month shelf life made in italy if you didn't know those are typically where her big mothership palettes are made if you're new to pat mcgrath yes 125 dollars is a very pricey price for an eyeshadow palette but once you buy one it's kind of hard to stop it becomes worth it at least in my opinion so all of her motherships are going to come in this black lacquered packaging it feels extremely luxurious it has a lot of weight to it not the best palettes to travel with seriously i don't recommend it you don't want any of the product inside to break or shatter though i will admit i mean i'm sure this packaging will protect it but not travel friendly i would say but these are works of art truly so <laughs> let's take a look at the palette itself we have a beveled mirror right here and then you are going to have the 10 eyeshadow shade she is so beautiful you guys it's been a long time since we've gotten a mothership palette so i am over the moon let's talk about my opinions on the color story all of that because I know a lot of you were kind of disappointed with this launch because the colors of her marketing and what she was hinting I mean we got a lot of this here so I think you know all of us true Pat McGrath lovers were really hoping for something that was more colorful pastel rainbow like just because we really don't have that from her collection and I personally do feel like the colors in here don't really match up with that marketing it was basically one color that really inspired the watercolor marketing or I suppose these two right here you can kind of see the bluish purplish shifts whereas I was hoping the mattes would almost match up with this so I myself was expecting a different palette as well in a different color story I definitely was a little bit disappointed in that however I want to look at it from the perspective of a standalone palette and I really really do love this color story and I feel like this has potential to be one of my favorite color stories just based on the typical colors that I personally do wear. So while it wasn't what I was expecting it to be and that is disappointing, alone as a palette marketing aside, it's a gorgeous gorgeous color story in my opinion. When I was looking at my other palettes though, it definitely does remind me the most of probably Divine Rose 2. I'm gonna show you side by side in that they have a kind of similar vibe here. I mean, you gotta admit, they look like sisters, <laughs> don't they? So, I don't know. But like I said, I really just want to look at this as a standalone palette. I don't want that bias to overtake my feelings on this palette because truth be told, the large majority of consumers do not own the entire Pat McGrath line. And I think over time, just what I've discovered from Pat McGrath is I don't think she's going to come out with a true rainbow palette. That's not the aesthetic of the types of palettes that she creates. She creates well-rounded palettes that are for the average person 
person who need to wear more neutral tones so she always adds a wearable aspect to her mothership palette while also adding a few fun colors in and I just think that's the general story for her mothership palettes and how she's going to continue it. I would love for her to come out with a totally out there palette, but I mean, from a brand's perspective, that's probably not the best way to sell your palettes. Looking at it from the other side, I would definitely say this is a great palette for somebody who wants to dip into something a little bit more colorful, but it's still wearable. And what's great about her mothership palette and why I love them is because while you can get these crazy galactic looks, you can also get really Really wearable colors. It's always great to have a nice brown in here, a nice dusty rose, a nice gold, because those are the colors that I reach for the most. As much as I don't want to admit it, they are. I am basic. So that's just kind of my thoughts about it. Anyways, let's take a look individually at the colors here. We're gonna do live swatches because I haven't even swatched these yet, and since I didn't do my research on this palette, we're gonna discover this together. So taking a look at the formulations in here, we have three true mattes, all beautiful colors. We have, I would say, four metallic shades, and then we have three blitz astral shades. So so let's take a closer look. How I'm going to swatch, we're going to go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have our basic champagne shade, which again, while it might seem boring to the palette, it always is one that you're going to use. You know you're going to use it. Same goes with this brown tone, but you can see this has a little bit of rosiness to it as well. And look how gorgeous that swatched. It felt very smooth. Again, something you might find to be boring and unnecessary, but it is, in my opinion, based on the colors that I use, 100% necessary. We have our rose tone here. Definitely a complimentary color to the palette. It's a dusty color. I think it's gorgeous. And then, ooh, this felt buttery smooth, almost wet. This is almost a newer formula from her. It's been in some recent palettes, but it wasn't in the first three motherships. It's a gorgeous formula. You can see a little bit of those glitter particles, but that is stunning. That's a color I'm going to use. And this in of itself is a whole look right here. You can create a gorgeous rose toned look with this. Oh my gosh, this color feels so wet as well. I love this formulation of hers. I hope she continues to come out with this. Beautiful rosy bronze tone. Now we have a nice coral shade right here. This is gonna add the fun pops. Again, you can see this right here. These first six colors, they definitely create a look together. No oh, pat. We have another gold. Pat cannot live without adding a gold in her palette. This one is a little bit flaky, but I am interested to see how it works with the artistry wand. Looks gorgeous. It's going to be beautiful all over the lid. The next shade that we have, ugh, creamy wet. It's similar to Sextra Terrestrial. You can definitely tell it's different. It's more muted, but it has that shift there. Really excited that she's playing with these shifts. That felt so wet and creamy. I'm putting my arm down because my arm was falling asleep, but this shade's stunning. Last two shades, these are kind of the standout shades in the palette. Typically, in the Mothership palettes, the last four shades are going to be the ones that knock your socks off, and so far, so good. But these two shades... Mm, let's see. So they're that glittery formula that I so love from her Mothership palette. And it always is a little bit harder to pick up on camera, but there definitely are some shifts in here. So beautiful. Let's see. This shade, give it to me. That's going to be gorgeous all over the lid. So this is what the palette's looking like. Now, taking a look at it on my arm, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I love this color story. I think for it to be a palette perfectly curated for myself, which obviously Pat McGrath isn't going, what would Morgan Turner do? What would Morgan Turner like? I mean, I think what would also help it match up with the marketing more is if she added a little bit more purple tones to go with this shade right here. I would love to see some corresponding tones right there. And I would like to see a little bit more hints of blue as well. I I mean, all things put together, I really do love this color story. I think it's stunning. I can't wait to put it on my eyeballs. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. But first, here are the swatches in different lighting on a different camera setting so you can better see the colors, what they're going to look like. 
<laughs> okay, let's get a little bit closer. Couple key points before we get started with the tutorial. This look I really make so that I can test the formulations. It's not as maybe cohesive or as beautiful <laughs> as I would like for it to be. But fear not friends, I will have a at least three look video coming out not tomorrow but the day after i'm uploading my huda beauty wild obsessions palette tutorials tomorrow and then the day after i will have my pat mcgrath video for you guys so there will be more looks for inspiration and you can kind of see how i pair the colors together to create more cohesive looks but for now we're gonna do this one which is a hodgepodge as as many colors as i could put on my eye to try it out but we're gonna do it a little bit different because i actually didn't use the artistry wand on on this eye because I want to see how they differ. So this was without the artistry wand as I would normally put the eyeshadows before this guy existed but this eye we're gonna do it with the artistry wand but first I want to place down my mattes here. We are starting off with the dusty rose shade. You guys I love this shade so much by the way I just put down Too Faced Shadow Insurance in case you're wondering what base I'm using but this color is so complementary to all of the shades that are in this palette. It blends out beautifully. It has so much pigmentation to it, but not overly so. But you can just see that this is going to be a great base color for all of the other tones in here. And I'm just putting that right on the crease. Nothing too crazy. That was a BK Beauty 201 brush, by the way. I'm going in with my Ruffer 27 brush. We're gonna do this rosy brown shade right here. This is the deepest shade in the palette. So you maybe aren't going to get as much depth as you can get from her other palette, which I do feel like have more depth to it. But if we're sticking with the light, ethereal, pastel kind of theme that the marketing had, it made sense that there wasn't a ton of depth in this palette. But you can see typically with Pat McGrath mattes, they pull a lot of depth on the eyelid. I think one of the most amazing things about her brand is they really do work for all skin tones. So this still does pull pretty deep. I'm also going to take it on an Isom V35. I'm just running this along the lower lash line. But you can see the blend is so easy. I mean, I'm not really here to judge too much on the formulations just because I know they're going to be good. These are nice, creamy. There was one palette that she had where I felt like the mattes weren't as creamy and I was worried at the direction of the brand. These are her good formula. And we're going to take the coral shade back with my BK Beauty brush. Just a little bit. I'm really tapping my brush off and you see this pink haze I have above? That's what I'm doing with this. It's just bleeding out into this gorgeous coral shade. It adds a fun element of color without being too obnoxious. It's like that. Isn't that cute? I might want to use that as a blush. I don't know. We'll see. I know Pat has her blushes, but I like to use these the guys as blushes. It's time. We're gonna play with the artistry wand. Now this is $32 and the reason that I think she came out with this is because a big and popular critique she gets is that her glitter shades fall all over the face. I don't typically have too much problems with that. I do get some glitter fallout, but that doesn't bother me just because I do feel like that's the nature of glitter shadows. And I do suggest that you do use a glitter glue if you are concerned about fallout, but I just really never bothered. I mean, you can see right here, I do have some fallout, but I'm unbothered by it for some reason. But anyways, this is kind of her version of a glitter glue. These are called the Intensifies Artistry Wand. So I'm very curious about this. I was very excited about this, and I think this lost some attention because everybody was so excited for the actual Mothership palette. But this in of itself is exciting for me. These are made in Korea. They have a six month shelf life. They're gonna come in this holographic packaging, plastic, nothing crazy. It doesn't feel particularly luxe. I wish this was almost like a golden metal kind of packaging, almost like her mascara, but it's just black plastic. <laughs> I wonder if the writing's actually going to end up coming off, but it's the shape of a triangle and I don't like this, but it's push up. I wish it was twist up because sometimes I feel like you can get too much product out. Am I like missing something here? Why is this not pushing out? Is this supposed to happen? There we go. Okay. Took a lot of pushes to get it. So let's see. Let's feel it. Feels very thin. It's not thick or anything. Doesn't feel too tacky either. It does feel like a shadow is going to stick to it better, but it doesn't 
feel like a glitter glue. It doesn't have that sticky tacky feeling. Interesting, so let's compare. I'm gonna use this shade right here because this is one of her chunkier glitter formulas. She doesn't have very many of these, but I did find the glitter particles to definitely fall out more because they are bigger in this color, but let me do a dry swatch for you. This is no glitter glue, no, not the artistry wand, but you can see it's a little bit fallouty. Nothing too bad, but you know, <laughs> right next to it, I'm gonna put some of the artistry wand. It's completely clear, you can't see it. It definitely holds on to the glitter better. You can see it definitely has more opacity to it. Let me back up so you can see. Which is causing the metallic to be stronger, of course, because all of the pigment is grabbing onto that. So we'll see how it does on the eyelid, but it definitely doesn't feel as strong as glitter glue, but I think I like that because I didn't even use glitter glue in the first place. So I'm going to put this all over the lid. I like the triangle shape because it allows you to go like that. So I think that was intentional. The only thing I would worry about is getting some product on here, but I didn't get any eyeshadow product. I used this shade first because I wanted to see if I liked it on the eyelid because it reminds me a lot of Sextra Terrestrial and honestly, I didn't like that shade in the Divine Rose too because I thought the green shift looked weird on the eye <laughs> and it looked like I got punched in the face. You didn't see it too much on this eye, but it's there, I promise you. And let's see if we can, yeah, we can still blend it into the crease. It doesn't stop the shadow from being blended and move. Which by the way, I like this shade, but I still don't think I'd like it all over the lid because I hate when you turn the eye and the green or the dark shift is in the inner corner. I think it looks weird. So I don't necessarily love this shade in general on the eye. It's pretty to look at, but it's not as flattering on the eyelid, but some of you guys might like it. But anyways, that's what that looks like on the eye. I had to test it out. We did use this shade on the eyelid, so I'm gonna do that here. Let's see if we get less fallout, because I did get fallout here. I'm just using my finger for everything. Definitely a lot less fallout. Now, I don't think it did too much in the way of making it look more wet or more metallic on the lid. I just feel like it stops the fallout and hopefully is going to increase the longevity. But on the swatch, you can see it made it stronger and all of the particles stuck to it. So it will make the eye look more metallic. But for me, I think the big thing with this is that you're just gonna have less fallout. So I'm gonna put some down here as well using a refer number 12 brush and I had to use the purple shade. Could it not test it out today? It is another glittery formula. So typically this does have more fallout. You can definitely see it's more vibrant on this lower lash line here because that shade is a bit flaky in the best way possible. That's what keeps it looking really galactic. And it was definitely a lot easier and quicker to apply here with this artistry wand. So very interesting. I definitely don't have a glitter glue that acts quite like this. So I'm interested to see how this works with a lot of other shadows and other formulations. But to me, this isn't about the stick. It really is just about keeping the shadows in place and having less fallout and kind of solving the problems that we've been having with those glitter shades while also still keeping the integrity of the shadow and the kind of looks that you can get because I don't find on the eyelid that it looks particularly different. You can see a difference between this eye and this eye in the lower lash line so it does help with that intensity as well but I'm happy to see her have come out this because I do feel like this was missing from her line especially no that her shades in particular definitely needed this. I like it, however, would I pick this up over a Too Faced glitter glue? No. Like, I think if you have Too Faced glitter glue, you don't need to run out and get this. I'm not particularly crazy about having to go in over my eye with the actual product, but hey, I mean, I don't mind it. I think it's nice and it's a different texture. So this is a look. Like I said, a hodgepodge of all the colors so that I could play around with it. But I'm going to put on liner and lashes and everything is going to come together. You just wait. <laughs> We're going to do something really quick before I put falsies on and finish the look. I know Pat McGrath has highlights. I know Pat McGrath has blushes now, which, yes, I love saying that. But... I do like to play around with her palettes because she always pops in shades that can be used as blushes. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this Dusty Rose color. This is a Esam V50. Tapping my brush off a lot because these are very, very pigmented. When you use her shadows as blushes, you wanna be very light-handed just because her shades do carry so much pigment. But I love using shadows on the cheeks that I use on my eyes because it pulls the whole look together. So you can see this Dusty Rose shade looks beautiful 
on the cheeks. Is it as good as her blush formula? No, but it can be done. See? so pretty and then we're gonna take this shade right here and you need to be very careful with this shade because this essentially it's like a hot coral pink it's very bright but I'm just gonna take a touch of it on the tip of my brush because I do have it peeking out from here I'm just gonna put it on the apples of the cheek just like that and see she behaves very very well just look cute on the cheek I love it you know what I'm actually going to do I'm trying to improve my look here I took some of that coral shade again kind of running it down here so that it really pulls everything together yes might have made me look a bit sickly doing that but I feel like it was the right move and then just for curiosity's sake I probably would never actually do this in real life we're gonna use this as a highlight this is a Kaleidos H1 brush Am I tripping? Does that look really good? That does look really good. And another experiment before I finish the look. Let's see what comes off easier. Oh my gosh, huge difference. So that artistry wand is definitely going to help with the longevity because you can see it came completely off where I rubbed it off on my dry skin and the side with the artistry wand is definitely holding strong. Okay, cool. Let me put on some eyelashes and lips and then we'll be back for my final thoughts on the palette. Lashes, lips, everything will be listed down below if you are curious, but this is what the final look looks like. And even though I said, oh, it's just a hodgepodge of colors, the thing is, when you throw the glitters on the eyelid, they look amazing no matter what from Pat McGrath. So I'm gonna go into my final thoughts and definitely listen up because they have evolved throughout this video. We're gonna start off, of course, with the palette and I just wanna go over the colors and kind of give you some tips and tricks as far as application and just what I noticed with the texture of these. So the mattes are all really great. Just be mindful that they are very, very pigmented. That's the nature of Pat McGrath's shadows. So if you're more fair or you're not used to working with very pigmented shadows, use a light hand, tap off your brush. They aren't too powdery. They're not going to give you too much fallout and they're very easy to work with. But I would definitely say start off with a light hand. Less is more to begin with. This is what makes Pat McGrath's shadows so awesome is how versatile they can be. You can really get a light layer of color or you can really pack it on for true pigment. In particular, you want to be careful with this shade because it looks a little bit more wearable in the pan, but it really pulls very, very coral, very, very hot on the eyelid. So just be mindful of that. But these three mattes are beautiful. I love them. The shimmers are very, very wet feeling, creamy, gorgeous. I have nothing bad to say about them. They are going to apply it best with a finger. However, they will still work with a brush. I love all four of them. The shade right here, you will notice, has a little bit more glitter particles, but they don't fall out because the formula is so creamy. It truly is embedded in the formula, but they're absolutely stunning. This shade, you know, they're so pretty to look at, but I really don't find them to be flattering on the lid. That's just my personal opinion on this one though. So while it's amazing for me, I don't find it to be very flattering. The three glitter shades here, she has different variations of her Blitz Astral formula. Some are very, very glittery and some are very fine in the glitter and they basically have more of like a gelée feel and the formula has a lot less fallout. These three formulations are the ones that are a little bit more flaky and flaky doesn't come with a bad connotation here just because that is what gives it the extra dimension on the eyelid. That is what is giving you all of the texture that you see here. So I personally like that. However, you do need to be careful with formulation. I noticed in particular the gold is quite flaky and then this shade right here has a lot of fallout. However, thanks to the artistry wand that will solve that. And I'll get into the artistry wand in a second. But just be aware, you want to be careful with these. I don't necessarily recommend applying these with brushes because of the fallout. However, if you need to definitely use something really tacky like a glitter glue underneath because you will get fallout however the look on the eye is unmatched <laughs> it makes it worth it so those are kind of my two cents about application and the individual shades overall I mean I like this palette it is once again another win is it what I envisioned the color
color story was going to be. No, but as a standalone palette, I really do feel very happy with the color stories here. And even though I haven't filmed my multiple looks video yet, I feel inspired and I see a lot of different looks that I want to create with this palette. So I like the color story nonetheless. It really kind of leans in my ballpark of colors that I like to wear. So for me, I'm into it, but definitely stay tuned for my multiple looks video because that one will hopefully inspire you. Now, I wasn't too sure about this artistry wand at first, but I actually really do like it. If you have a glitter glue, I don't think you need this. However, the glitter glue has so much stronger of attack to it that I do find it is hard, even with the Pat McGrath shadows, to blend them after you apply it on top. Once you place the shadow down, it sticks and it does not move. With this, this allows you a lot more flexibility so I put this on the eyelid and the eye that I have the artistry wand on there is no fallout whatsoever the eye that I did not use the artistry wand on there is fallout so this definitely makes a difference it's going to help with the longevity of the shadow as well and help with fallout throughout the day which you saw on my example for the hand but it's a lot lighter than a typical glitter glue. So what I like about this is you do have the flexibility to blend the shadow after you apply it on top. So it isn't like a where you place it, it's gonna stay forever. So you have more flexibility with this. I do think there are pros and cons between both. I personally would just stick to a glitter glue, but that's just me. I think that this definitely has a place and it's really good, but I do wanna play with it more because that opinion could change. I could actually end up liking this more than the glitter glue because it has so much more flexibility but we'll see but so far I really like this I think it definitely does make a difference so there we have it you guys that was my first impressions on the new Utopian dream collection items again make sure you have my notification bell turned on because I will have a full dedicated tutorial video up in a couple of days on this palette and that's all I have for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you aren't subscribed to my channel already I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you all in like swallowing my hair <laughs> i'll see you all in the next one i guess have a good one